He was the single most successful investor of the 20th century. Time magazine named him one of the most influential people in the world he's worth over $70 billion. He's Warren Buffett and here are his top 10 rules for success. Number 1. Find your passion. You find your passion. I was very, very lucky to find it you know, when I was uh, seven or eight years old. And, you know, and, and fortunately, my children have found their passion. My, you know, one son loves farming like nothing else. One son loves music like everything else. And, and all three of them love philanthropy and what they get to do. You're lucky in life when you, you find it. And uh, you can't guarantee you're going to find it in your first job out. But I always tell the college students that come out, I said, take the job that you would take if you were independently wealthy. You know, that's, you're going to do well at it. Number two, don't care what other think. It never bothered me if people disagreed with what I thought, uh, as long as I thought I knew the facts. I mean, I, there's a whole bunch of things I don't know to think about. I just stay away from those. Uh, so I stay within what I call my circle of competence. You know, that uh, and Tom Watson said it best. He said, you know, he said, he said, I'm no genius, but I'm smart in spots, and I stay around those spots. Well, I try and stay around those spots, and I, I just don't have a, a problem if, if. Uh, if somebody says, you know, you're wrong on something, I, just, I go back and look at the facts. And, and, and it, I, think that, I think that really is much more important, frankly, than, than having a few points of IQ or, or having an extra course or two in, in school or anything of the sort. You need emotional stability. Number three, have a margin of safety. Famous lesson about a margin of safety, that you don't drive a truck that weighs 9,900 pounds across a bridge that says limit 10,000 pounds, because you can't be that sure about it. If you see something like that, you get on a little further down the road and you find one that says limit 20,000 pounds, and that's the one you drive across. Number four, have a competitive advantage. Nature of capitalism is that people want to come in and take your castle. It's perfectly understandable. I mean, if I'm selling television sets or something, there's going to be 10 other people that are going to try and sell a better television set. If I have a restaurant here in Omaha, people are going to try and copy my menu and give more parking and take my chef and so on. So capitalism's all about somebody coming and trying to take the castle. Now, what you need is you need a castle that has some durable competitive advantage, some castle that has a moat around it. And that moat, best, one of the best moats in many respects is to be a low-cost producer. But sometimes the moat is just having more talent. I mean, if you're the heavyweight champion of the world and you keep knocking out people, you've got a competitive advantage as long as you can keep doing it. And it's very profitable uh, if you're the one that happens to be able to do it. If you can turn out great motion pictures, I mean, you know, Steven Spielberg, I mean, he, he, he's a fellow to bet on. And, and it has enormous economic value. Number five, stay in your cycle of competence. Defining your circle of competence is the most important aspect of investing. It's not how important, uh, how, how large your circle is. You don't have to be an expert on everything. But knowing where the perimeter of that circle of what you know and what you don't know is, and staying inside of it, is all important. Tom Watson Sr., who started IBM, said in his book, he said, I'm no genius, he said, but I'm smart in spots and I stay around those spots. And, you know, that is the key. Uh, so if I understand a few things and I stick in that arena, I'll do okay. And if I don't understand something, but I get all excited about it because my neighbors are talking about it, the stocks are going up and everything, they start fooling around someplace else, eventually I'll get cream, and I should. Number six, always be competing. What kills great businesses, if you look at, I do, I do believe in looking at history, and I, 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 and I try to, I like to study failure, actually. And my, my partner says, all I want to know is where I'll die, so I'll never go there. And, and we want to see what has caused businesses to go bad. And the biggest thing that kills them is complacency. I mean, you, you want a, a restlessness, a feeling that, you know, that, that somebody's always after you, but you're going to stay ahead of them. You, you always want to be on the move. And, and uh, uh, when you've got a great business, you know, like Coca-Cola, which is, there aren't any like Coca-Cola, but, but uh, you really, the, the danger would always be that you rest on your laurels, but I see none of that, obviously, at Coca-Cola, but that, that, that is the key, to, to compete the same way when you've got 1.8 billion servings being sold daily as when you were selling, you know, 10 a day, and, and that restlessness, that belief that, that Tomorrow is more exciting than today. You, know, you just have to have it permeate the organization. Number seven schedule for your personality. You'd be surprised at, at, at my days. I mean, they are, they're very unstructured, no meetings. 
None. I mean, we don't, I don't like meetings. And uh, I read a lot. I wish I were a faster reader. I, you know, I get more done. But I, I but I do read a lot, and I I'm on the phone a moderate amount. Uh, our businesses run themselves, basically, out there. My job is allocating capital, and, and I, that's what I'm thinking about. But I don't like to have things all packed hour to hour to hour. And, and Bill and I are both extraordinarily lucky. I mean, we really get to do what we like to do, the way we want to do it, with people that we choose to be around, and they're terrific. I mean, we, we've really got everything uh, our way, and it's, it, it, we're very fortunate. And in his world, he has, some, he has a different kind of pace than I have. But we both love it the way we do it, and, and uh, my guess is that we're each the most productive in that particular mode, too, because it, 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 it fits our personalities and, and, and aptitudes. Number eight, read and learning. I just read and read and read. I probably read five to six hours a day. I don't read as fast now as, as when I was younger, but I read five daily newspapers. I read a fair number of, of magazines. I read 10Ks. I read annual reports. And I read a lot of other things, too. So I, I, I've always enjoyed reading. I love reading biographies. Number nine, cash is always a bad investment. Well, cash is always a bad investment. Uh, when people said cash is king a year ago, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, cash wasn't producing anything, and it was sure to go down in value over time. I mean, then you always want to be sure you have enough. I mean, <laughs> it's like, like oxygen. You want to be sure it's around, you know, but you don't need to have, you don't need to have excessive amounts of it around. And cash, we will always have enough cash yeah. around. But any time we have surplus cash around, I'm unhappy. I mean, I would much rather have good businesses than cash. And, and uh, we found a chance in the last year, thereabouts, to deploy. We, we came in with something over $40 billion in cash, right. and we've got about $20 billion now, and we've had some earnings. So we, we put a lot of cash to work, and I like that. No, I'd much rather own a good business uh, than have cash. Uh, and it is a hedge against the dollar? Well, you can say all assets are a hedge against okay. the, the dollar. I mean, but the, all you know is that the dollar is going to be worthless 10, 20, 30 years from now. I say worth less, not right. worthless. Right. <laughs> you want to watch that. Yeah, but right. it will be, you know, and that's, that's true of almost every currency that I can think of. Uh, the question is how much uh, it depreciates in value. Number 10, invest in yourself. The best boat you can have is your own talent. You know, I mean, it's they can't they can't take it away from you. They inflation can't take it from you. Right. Taxes can't take it from you. So, I, I when I talk to students, I see these students and I tell them, you know, you're a million dollar asset. I would pay you a hundred thousand dollars the MBAs for ten percent of the earnings for the rest of your life. So that makes you a million dollar asset. Now, if you can do something to increase that value fifty percent, if you can learn to communicate better verbally or in written form, and you become fifty percent more, that's five hundred thousand dollars just by improving yourself. I mean. It's, not, nobody can take that away from you, and and so I urge every, everybody, you know, when they're, I talk to them in high school about this and and and, and colleges, just do develop develop the habits. You've got the brain power, you've got the energy, but develop the habits of success and and look around you at the people that you admire, you know, and list what makes you admire them compared to somebody else that looks equally strong or equally uh, talented, and. Those are, those are things that you can do. I mean, just write them down. And, and, and uh, you know, people like people that are, they're, they like them if they're, if they're humorous, if they're friendly, if, they're, if, they're, uh, if they give credit to the other fellow. I mean, I, and, and they don't like them if they're stingy, you know, or they overstate and overpromise and all those sort of things. Well, that's, decision, that's a decision you make. So, so I, I encourage everybody to build your own moat around yourself. Thanks for watching. Might know the YouTube channel. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.